is not just a physical location. Zion is the spiritual dwelling of God. And in Psalms, and in Psalm 48, for example, it says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness, beautiful for situation, is the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion, is Mount Zion and the sides of the north, the city of the great king. The joy of the whole earth, Mount Zion, from Zion. Oh, in Psalm 128, it says, in Zion, that's where God's blessing comes from. In Isaiah 2 and 3, it says God's revelation comes from Zion. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. God's revelation is the Torah or the teaching of God. That's what Torah means. From Zion, God's authority comes in Psalm 110, verse 2. From Zion, God's refuge and protection is found in Isaiah 14 and 32. That is out of Zion. Zion. Everybody say Zion. Zion. God's healing from Zion. God's healing and forgiveness come in Isaiah 33, 24. These are from Zion where these things come from. God's provision from Zion. God's provision comes in Psalm 132 and verses 13 through 16. Hallelujah. From Zion in Jeremiah 31 verses 12 and 13 come joy. From Zion comes joy. Hallelujah. Melissa Dudley, Hallelujah. you have joy. You have joy. It's coming from Zion. Hallelujah. It's coming from God's spiritual dwelling. Hallelujah. 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 All these things come from Zion. Hallelujah. We host God's presence in the earth. We are the host. Yes. We are the host. Yes. In the whole world, the church is the host of God's presence. Hallelujah. What are we here for? What do we sing for? Yes. What do we play for? Oh, he tells us in Ezekiel chapters 8 through 11, watch out for idolatry. That's what happened to the church in the 4th and 5th centuries. They brought idols into the church. Yes. It split the church. Yes. And God's glory departed in Israel. A little by little, it, it disappeared from the holiest of holies. It disappeared from the holy place. Then it disappeared from the courtyard. And God said, he moved a little farther away. Moved a little farther away. And that's what happened to the church. It became paganized. Idolatry came in, and God's presence departed. Yes. So what we need to do? We need to establish holiness where God dwells. Yes. Deuteronomy 23, 14. God's Shekinah demands holiness. Holiness. Yes. What is holiness? It's not so much you got to be squeaky clean. It's you got to honor the things that God honors. That's why I was so pleased yesterday the people honored this place, this building. It's just a building. Well, now it's not just a building because something happened here. I can't explain. But there's a Shekinah that wants to come in greatly to this church. Another thing that needs to be established is continual worship. God inhabits, or is enthroned, is another translation, with the, present, the praises of his people. God is enthroned. God's pattern for the tabernacle. We won't even go beyond what I'm saying here today. The end of the thing is. Well, I will. I just saw real quickly run through this. 
First of all, there's an altar of burnt offerings in our life. Leviticus chapter 6. There's a table of showbread in Leviticus 24. A golden lampstand in Leviticus 24. An altar of incense in Exodus chapter 30. And each of these articles, items, instruments of worship were to be continual. Continual worship, Amen. continual thanksgiving. Ah. Ah, fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Prayer, continual. We find this in Luke 24, Acts 1, Acts 2, Acts 2 again, and Hebrews 13 and 15. Let us offer continually. Continually, he talks about. In August 13, 1727, the Moravians started a prayer meeting which lasted 24-7 for over 100 years. Out of this prayer meeting came a man called John Wesley. John Wesley preached the gospel in England and probably saved it from the demise that fell upon France. The French Revolution. And all of the things that happened. Hallelujah. Last things. We are Zion. Amen. Hebrews 12, 22 tells us you have come to Mount Zion, the church of the living God. You have come to Mount Zion, the church of the living God. This is the true Zion. Not a location on a geographic site. But this is Zion. We are Mount Zion in the sides of the north, the city of the great king. We are a dwelling place for God. We are the Christian house of prayer. Hallelujah! My house shall be called a house of prayer among all nations. Let us walk in the Shekinah. Let us walk in the Shekinah. Shekinah belongs to us. Let us invite the Shekinah. Let's not just sing, pat our hands together a little bit. Oh, we seem extreme. It is extreme. Amen. They've always been extreme. Amen. Elijah was extreme. <laughs> Elisha was extreme. Moses was very extreme. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus was the most of all extreme. Hallelujah. He didn't tell men what they thought they were going to be told. But no man ever did the work he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shall we stand? Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. I tell you, I, I want you to have this. That's why I took the time. I took the time because I want us to have this belongs to us. Hallelujah. You know, you come to the church, what can I tell you? I'll, I'll give you a thousand dollars piece every week or something like that. I'll speak really people then. We have more than the people that have Cinderella with us today. Hallelujah. Anyway, what do I have to offer you? Only this. The Word. This Word gets in you. This Word gets every... Oh. The problem with the Christians 
the problem with Christians, I've heard it said, they the problem with Holy Ghost filled Christians, they all think they're preachers. <laughs> they all think they're prophets. They all of them do. <laughs> and they are. That's what God said. They should prophesy. Have visions. Dream dreams. Hallelujah. Moses said, I went to God that all God's people were prophets. Moses said. Hallelujah. So, somebody dismiss us. We're gonna, we got to go. I, I have nothing to offer you but the, the spirit and the truth of the word. Nothing to offer. There's nothing to entertain you much. Why are you here? I know why you're here. I think you are believing what I'm saying for each one of us. Mm -hmm. You can say something and you can just... Well, since you mentioned that about seeing visions, yeah. when I was sitting at the uh, Clavinova early in 
Sure. Uh, this is the God is in our midst. Yes. Who wants to do this? Um, I, God revealed this verse to me, and I think it's just um, over the weekend. I think it really just um, kind of goes with everything that we're doing right now. It's Isaiah 6, 3 through 4. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. And that shows the sound of our voices speaking and praising God. And I think the Lord, I have a vision too, um, similar to yours, to read more shopping. Just um, picturing God, the mighty breath of God, just gently blowing in here, and the Holy Spirit just permeating, and now the fire is within us, but it's up to us to ignite that, and to use that, and to release that. So we have that choice, but it's there, it's freely given unto us. Oh, so, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Our God is a consuming fire. That's so great. That's so great. Thank you. 